Welcome back to Moving to Hampton Roads. When you're moving from one part of the country to another, a lot can change, including your basic expenses. And as we all know, some parts of the country are more expensive than others. If you're moving to Newport News, possibly transferring to Fort Eustis, or taking a new job at the shipyard, then this video is for you, because today we're going to talk about the cost of living in Newport News. Stick around to the end, and I'll show you what I believe is the best value, not only in Newport News, but in all of Hampton Roads. My name is David Tortellini, and I've been a resident of Newport News since 2010, so I'll be able to offer you some real-world numbers on what it costs to live in this city. I am, of course, also a real estate agent here in Newport News, serving the entire southeastern Virginia region that we call Hampton Roads. If you're planning to move to the area, my team and I would love to help. You can call, text, or email me anytime. In this video, we're going to look at some of life's major expenses. These are all expenses you would have no matter where you live and should provide a good perspective on how much living in Newport News will cost you relative to where you are now. Today's topics will include the price of groceries, dining out, entertainment, the cost of gasoline, daycare expenses, and of course, housing and utilities. These are all major expenses that most people will have regardless of where they live and should provide a good barometer for the cost of living in Newport News. Let's dive right into it and start with everyone's favorite topic, the cost of gasoline. At the time of making this video, and we're filming this in September of 2023, gas in the area is right around $3.50 a gallon. Of course, there's some variation depending on where you go, but $3.50 is about average. But how does that compare to other areas around the country? I used the website gasbuddy.com to look at five other major cities in different parts of the country to help put our price in perspective a bit. Starting in the north with Boston, Massachusetts, I found that gas at the time we were around $3.50, Boston was hovering around $3.80 per gallon. That $0.30 cents per gallon can definitely add up over time. Next, I went down to Orlando, Florida, where prices were similar to Newport News, but slightly higher at around $3.60 per gallon. Then I took a look at Chicago and the surrounding area, and gas there was significantly higher, right at $4 per gallon. Yikes. Looking at Dallas-Fort Worth area next, and this shouldn't come as a surprise, gas was only $3.30 per gallon, easily the least expensive of the group. And on the other end of the spectrum, we had San Diego, California, where gas was over $5 a gallon at most gas stations in the area, which is insane. So we saw quite the range in gas prices in the samples I used there, from $3.30 in Dallas up to $5 plus in San Diego. I'm happy to see that Newport News was on the lower end at $3.50 per gallon. Regardless of the cost, I think we can all agree that gas is still way too expensive. Okay, let's move on to our next topic. This one has been in the news a lot the last couple of years, and that's the cost of groceries. Nationwide, we've seen a dramatic increase in the cost of groceries. If you have a family and are trying to feed growing children who suck down food like a shop vac, then groceries can become a huge expense. Newport News offers a variety of grocery stores with a tremendous range in pricing. You'll find everything from low-cost, no-frill stores like Food Lion, to wholesale clubs like Costco and Sam's Club, to the wildly expensive Whole Foods. We also have Trader Joe's, Harris Teeter, and Kroger. So at the very least, you have the ability to shop around and find the best prices on the food you buy the most. For this segment, I went to three of the most popular grocery stores in Newport News to compare prices on seven of the most popular grocery items in America. Our grocery stores for this comparison are Food Lion, of which there are many in Newport News, Walmart, and Kroger. There are two Walmarts in Newport News and another just into York County, which is more convenient for many people living in Newport News, so I actually got my prices at the York County Walmart. Kroger is just over the line in York County as well, but it is the largest grocery store in the area and right across from the entrance to Kiln Creek, the largest subdivision in Newport News, so I thought it would be a good fit for this video. The items we'll compare are peanut butter, cereal, chicken breast, milk, eggs, bread, and laundry detergent. Okay, let's start with my favorite product in the world, peanut butter. With peanut butter, I focused on a popular brand name that you'll find in most grocery stores, Jif, specifically the 40 ounce jars. Let's look at our three prices. At Food Lion, which I mentioned is a fairly standard no-frills grocery store, of which there are a bunch in Newport News, Jif happened to be on sale that day for $4.97. However, normally it comes in at $6.97. Next, I went to Kroger, which is a huge grocery store and absolutely a step up in terms of quality and condition. And there, Jif was $7.49. 
Then at Walmart, Jif came in again at $6.97. It should be noted that store brand peanut butter is available in most grocery stores in the area and is not only significantly less expensive, but it also tastes better. I eat a ton of peanut butter, so I'm kind of an expert in this field, and I don't know why anybody pays for name brand peanut butter. For my money, Food Lion brand peanut butter is the best of the bunch. I keep a 64 ounce jar on my kitchen counter with a spoon at all times. Next up is cereal. For this, I wanted a cereal that's popular and I knew I'd find everywhere. So I looked at Honey Nut Cheerios. Cereal boxes come in many sizes these days, from the standard box to family size, and Walmart even has a mega size, apparently. But I wanted to keep it simple, so using the standard 10.8 ounce box, prices were as follows. At Food Lion, Honey Nut Cheerios came in at $4.19. At Kroger, it was $4.29. And at Walmart, we definitely found our winner here at $3.68. So cereal eaters, you may want to make your way over to Walmart for those great deals. All right, next we have chicken breast. For this, I looked at the largest package possible because the smaller the package, the more expensive it was per pound. Food Lion came in at $2.49 per pound, Kroger was $2.79 per pound, and Walmart was $2.97 per pound. That one was surprising. I really thought Walmart was going to win that one, but Food Lion is the place to go for your chicken breast. Now let's look at one gallon of whole milk. Food Lion came in at a whopping $3.90 per gallon, which seems very high. I do think it's usually lower than that, but this day it was $3.90. Kroger was only $3.08 and Walmart was almost identical at $3.07. Then we moved one cooler over to look at eggs. For this, I compared the price of one dozen grade A large white eggs. Remember out a year ago when eggs were like $6 per dozen? Okay, well those days are fortunately behind us. Food Lion and Walmart both came in at $1.13, but Kroger was the winner here at $1.09. Bread is up next. For this, we used Nature's Own White Bread, which is sold at all three stores. At Food Lion, a loaf of bread was $3.59, at Kroger, it was $3.99, and at Walmart, it was just $3.42. Finally, we'll finish up our grocery list with a large 1.14 gallon container of Tide detergent. Just a reminder that while we're including Tide with our grocery list, please do not drink the Tide. For this, everyone was about the same, $19.99 at Food Lion and Kroger, and $19.94 at Walmart. So plan to spend about $20 just about everywhere on large brand name detergent. Looking at our three grocery stores, if you were to buy one of everything at each, you'd end up with a total bill at Food Lion of $39.98, half of which would just be the detergent. At Walmart, you'd spend $41.18, and at Kroger, not surprisingly, you'd be the highest at $42.72. All in all, not a huge difference between the three. Now, if you decide to do all your shopping at Whole Foods or Fresh Market, which basically no one around here does, you may spend quite a lot more than that. Or if you shop in bulk, you may find some great savings at Costco or Sam's Club. Let me know in the comments how these prices compare to where you live now. Okay, let's talk about housing. Overall, housing in Newport News is fairly affordable compared to much of the rest of the United States. Of course, there are definitely places that are less expensive, but with the surge in home values over the past few years, there's a good chance you're coming from somewhere more expensive than Newport News. The median sales price nationwide is hovering right around $420,000 right now. The median sales price in Newport News is just $275,000. That includes all single family homes, townhomes, and condos. Now let's go ahead and break that down a little bit. Over the past 90 days, the median sales price in Newport News for a single family home was $300,000, with a range as low as $20,000 for a complete teardown to a million dollars for a large farmhouse on the Warwick River. But a typical home selling in that median price of $300,000 would be a three or four bed, two full bath, 1,500 or 1,600 square foot home. If you need more space than that, obviously the price goes up a little bit. If you're looking at a townhome or a condo, the median sales price there is $100,000 less than a single family, right at $200,000, with sales price ranges of $62,000 up to $412,000. Of course, you'll also have to take condo and association dues into account as they can range significantly and dramatically increase your monthly housing cost. The other factor to keep in mind is property taxes. The tax rate in Newport News in 2023 is $1.18 per $100 of home value. That is above the national median of $1.11. 
So if you buy a medium priced single family home at $300,000, you'll pay $3,540 per year in real estate taxes. Those do typically get rolled into your mortgage, but that comes to $295 per month on top of your principal and interest. If you make it here and decide to rent, rental prices can vary tremendously, but a typical two bed, two bath apartment may cost you around $1,500 to $2,000 per month, or even more if you go for one of the newer places in town. Other big expenses when owning a home are the utilities. In Newport News, you'll have four major utility companies to deal with. First is electricity, which you'll get from Dominion Power. Then many homes have natural gas for heating or may power your water heater or just your stove. Your gas service will come from Virginia Natural Gas. And third is your water and sewer, which you'll get from Newport News Waterworks. And finally, trash and recycling, which is provided by HRSD. Let's take a look at the bills from the past few months of a home that fits the median single family home profile in Newport News and has a family of three living there. We'll start with HRSD. Trash is picked up weekly in Newport News. Recycling is every other week and bulk trash pickup is every other week as well and is usually the same day as recycling. Newport News is great in that you can leave a wide variety of items from landscaping debris to broken down play sets and mini fridges at the curb and bulk pickup will take it. You want to check their website for any limitations though. Bills for this have ranged from $25 to $40 per month, so not a major expense by any means. Now let's look at electricity. If your entire HVAC system is electric, then you can expect high bills in both the summer and winter months. It's summer now, and we're gonna look at the bills from usage in May, June, and July. So we'll be looking at some peak use numbers. Those came in at $117.90, $131.42, and then $275.50. May and June were fairly cool for the area, but July was a scorcher, and the AC was running full blast day and night. So those electric bills during July and August when it's 90 plus degrees nonstop, they can get up there. Natural gas this time of year, however, isn't bad at all. The last couple of months, while electricity was crazy expensive, gas bills only came in at $19.11 and $17.54. However, in the winter, you can expect those numbers to jump significantly while your electric bill drops and be very similar to the cost of peak use electricity while electricity costs drop below about $100. The spring and fall, when your HVAC is off and the windows are open, are glorious months for your bank account here in Hampton Roads. Finally, we have water and sewage bills. The last couple of months, bills have come in at $72.52 and $80.47 respectively. And those bills get broken down between water usage, sewer charges, and solid waste charges. Obviously, if you have a bigger family and you have a lot more showers being taken and toilets being flushed, this number could get quite a bit higher. And if you were to water your lawn with city drinking water, I've been told this number will jump to $400 or more. Okay, so those are your utility costs. I think like gasoline, they're all way higher than we wanna pay, but there isn't another option. The utility companies are all monopolies here in Newport News. Let's move on to another major expense for many young parents. And for many families, this is either their largest or second largest expense after their mortgage, and that's daycare. For that, I can share with you my personal experience. We had our daughter in two separate daycares in Newport News. One was considered fairly inexpensive and another that was considerably more expensive. We started her at Reformation Lutheran on Warwick, where we had a great experience and paid $740 every four weeks, so $185 per week. It's a little more expensive there for infants, so you might pay an extra $10 or $20 per week until your child is out of diapers. When our daughter was three, we moved her to Bright Heights Learning Center in Kiln Creek. That was on the higher end for Newport News at $1,200 every four weeks, which is a 60% increase over Reformation Lutheran. I'm sure there are daycares in the area that may cost a little less than Reformation Lutheran and a couple that cost more than Bright Heights, but I think it's fair to say to expect that to be your cost range, give or take, for daycare in Newport News. Let's move on to dining out in Newport News. So Newport News doesn't exactly have the most amazing restaurant scene of all time, but there are definitely some good places to go out to eat. And Newport News has just about every chain restaurant, fast food and casual dining restaurant that exists. So there are definitely lots of options out there. Let's take a look at a high-end restaurant, a middle of the road restaurant and a popular fast food restaurant to compare prices. Starting with high-end, Finn is a popular restaurant located in Port Warwick. This is about as expensive as a restaurant gets here in Newport News. 
Looking at their dinner menu, you'll spend about $12 to $24 on an appetizer and $30 to $50 on a standard entree, though they do offer some high-end steak options for $75 to $150. And they also offer a five-course and a seven-course tasting menu option for $85 and $100 per person. There are only a few other restaurants in Newport News, like Circa 1918 and Schlesinger's, where you'll pay these kind of prices. Most other restaurants are going to be considerably more affordable. For a more standard, family-friendly restaurant in Newport News, you might want to consider one of the many Mexican restaurants in town. Jose Tequila's is a very popular restaurant located in city center. Here you'll find a fairly standard Mexican restaurant menu with appetizers between $6 and $20, with most of their meals like burritos, tacos, and fajitas ranging from $14 to $25. Margaritas and other mixed drinks are going to range from about $12 to $18. For me, it's those darn margaritas that always get me right in the wallet. For a less expensive Mexican option, check out Chihuahua's on Oyster Point Road. And for fast food, let's Let's take a look at everyone's favorite restaurant, Chick-fil-A. At our local Chick-fil-A's, of which we have three, a combo meal is going to cost you between $8.79 for a standard Chick-fil-A sandwich meal and $12.25 for a grilled chicken club meal. The one thing to keep in mind when dining out in Newport News is that meals are taxed at 13.5%. That's 7.5% on top of the standard 5% sales tax rate. Of all the taxes that exist in the world, this one is my least favorite. Dining out is already expensive enough these days, so remember that when you're eating out, when the bill comes, it's always gonna be a bit higher than expected. Last but not least, let's talk about recreation costs in Newport News. Truth be told, there aren't a ton of recreational activities right in Newport News. If you live here, you'll most likely have to leave the city to go have fun on a regular basis. But what Newport News does have is often free, like hiking at Newport News Park or the summer concert series in Port Warwick, or you may want to head down to one of the beaches in Hampton. For paid attractions, if you have little kids, they're going to absolutely love the Virginia Living Museum, which is part museum, an educational center, and part zoo. There are dinosaurs and fun activities, both indoors and out. Single day passes there are $17 for kids and $20 for adults. You can add planetarium shows for $6 per person as well. Annual family passes, which I highly recommend, are just $139 per year for a one-year family pass, and that covers everyone. You'll also find yourself spending a lot of time at Surge Adventure Park, which is a giant trampoline park in Newport News. Tickets there start as low as $8 per hour for kids, six and under. Standard ticket rates start at $17. Surge is wildly popular for birthday parties and has been one of the best new additions to the city in quite some time. I was there the other day and marked to a parent, what do we do for birthdays before this place existed? And just up the road in Williamsburg, you'll find Bush Gardens and Water Country USA. If you live here, you'll undoubtedly find yourself at one of these amazing amusement parks on a fairly regular basis, regardless of whether or not you have children. With awesome roller coasters, restaurants, Events like Hallow Scream in the fall and Christmas Town around the holidays, there's something there for everyone. Single day passes can get pretty pricey at $53 for a single day pass at just one park. And that doesn't include parking or food while you're there. Most people who live in the area and know they're going to go to the park throughout the year opt for the annual passes. We do the Bush Gardens and Water Country two park premier pass, which does cost us $318 per person, but it's worth it to be able to come and go from either park as we please any day of the year and get preferred parking right by the entrance. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out all the prices and membership benefits. Now we don't have any major professional sports teams in Hampton Roads, but you can always shoot down to Norfolk to go watch a Tides baseball game. The Tides are the AAA affiliate of the Baltimore Orioles. And tickets there usually run right around $15 per ticket. So you'll spend more on a beer and a hot dog than you do on the actual game. Now I regularly hear people complain who live in Newport News that there's nothing to do. And if you only stay in the city of Newport News, that's probably true. There's only so much you can do here. But if you're willing to get in your car and drive 20 minutes to an hour to the surrounding cities, there's tons to do, much of which you don't have to pay a dime for. So whether you're looking for fun, free nights out, or you can drop $1,600 on season passes to Bush Gardens for your family of five, you will absolutely be able to find fun activities that meet your budget. At the beginning of this video, I promised to tell you what I believe is the best value in all of Hampton Roads, and it's located right here in Newport News, and that's the Mariner's Museum.
From the outside, this museum doesn't look like much, but when you get in, it's absolutely massive. It's the TARDIS of museums for all you Doctor Who fans out there. This museum has been designated as America's National Maritime Museum, and is also home to the USS Monitor Center. The Monitor was an ironclad Civil War era battleship of which there's a full-scale replica on site and the original turret of which is currently being restored at the Mariner's Museum. It also gives us half the name of the Monitor Merrimack Bridge Tunnel which connects Newport News to Suffolk. If old ships aren't your thing, the Mariner's Museum is also home to the Oracle, one of the fastest sailboats ever and winner of the 2013 America's Cup. This 72-foot catamaran and its exhibit are a sight to see. And for kids, there's a really fun scavenger hunt that will take them throughout the entire museum and is a great way to spend a rainy day. Now, the reason the Mariner's Museum gets my vote as the area's best value is not only that it's unexpectedly amazing, it's that entry only cost $1. A few years ago, the museum was given a $10 million endowment that allowed them to make admission practically free. Outside of the Smithsonian Museums in Washington, D.C., I honestly don't know of other museums or exhibits of this quality at this low cost. It's a great place to bring family when they come to visit. I mean, everyone's dad loves this place. So if you make the move to Newport News, definitely go check it out. Okay guys, well that's it for the cost of living in Newport News. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those below and I'll respond right away. Overall, I think Newport News is a fairly affordable place to live. It was a major reason why my wife and I moved to this area in 2010 when prices in Boston, where we lived at that time, had already started to get really unreasonable. I'll put links to some of the things we discussed in the description below, so be sure to check those out. And when you're ready to talk about your move to Newport News or the surrounding area, you can call, text, or email me anytime. My team and I would love to help you. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video, share it with anyone else you know who may be making a move to the Hampton Roads area, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks again for watching. My name is David Tortellini, and I'll see you in the next video.